This is the surface of Mars, dry, rocky, and red. And this is the high desert of Utah. It looks a lot like Mars, except that it's hot and home to some humans who've built a simulated Mars habitat here. The Mars Society wants to learn what it's like to live on and explore another world. Today, they've invited teams of university students here to their desert research station. Welcome to Mars. For the first ever University Rover Challenge, a competition that tests brains and engineering brawn in this unforgiving terrain. For months, four teams have been working on budgets of $10,000 or less to create remote-controlled rovers that will meet two timed challenges on a simulated mission to Mars. But today, two of those teams have major technical problems. It slips. Penn State University and UCLA I've got time to order, but can't get their rovers to work. That leaves two very competitive powerhouse teams, Utah's Brigham Young University, BYU for short, and the University of Nevada, Reno. Team Nevada is confident it has a scientific edge. As opposed to the other teams that maybe have four or five engineers, we have four or five engineers plus six scientists that will be characterizing the geology. Their secret weapon, an onboard chemistry lab. A robot arm scoops up soil samples, which are emptied into test tubes. It's all caught on a live video feed. If we were on Mars, we'd want to look for signs of life, and carbonates are usually breakdowns of life forms. So we're testing for them. Team BYU has an edge in engineering. Their rover is fast, and it has a low center of gravity, so it won't tip over on slopes. But their biggest advantage? Advanced optics. Stereoscopic navigation cameras and 3D glasses to help navigate the terrain. And even more important for the science task, an extreme close-up camera. And it's got a, a 10 times magnification lens here, which will uh, actually allow us to look at the grains of sand uh, pretty closely. It's time for the competition. The first challenge for the university teams is one of engineering. Behind me is Flag Hill, and it stands between the research station where they're living on Mars, hypothetically, an exploration team over here in the area south of Flag Hill, they've lost their own radio communications. So we've got to send out a rover with a small radio repeater that can see both the habitat they live in and the exploration team at work and reestablish communications. OK, guys, the clock is starting. You have 60 minutes. The teams can only navigate using video sent back from the rover, so the view from the outside world is blocked. Team Nevada matches up the images from the onboard cameras with their detailed topographical maps. They think they found a good spot for the radio repeater beacon. And then we got line of sight. Whenever you're ready. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the judges check the location, and it's good. Now it's BYU's turn. They're going to take advantage of their rover's low center of gravity. No, that's Sorry. the hill I'm trying to get to? Yeah, that hill, yes. Yeah. And place the radio relay on top of the hill. OK, go, 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 go. Oh. 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 Ready? Yeah, full speed. We try again and again. But the wheels don't have traction in the loose soil. If we can regain communications, let's just run out there and deploy it. So they go around the hill. Just go to the right side of the road, right at the point there, and just drop it. It's kind of mediocre deployment, but we're just happy it we worked. Done? And the judges agree it's a poor position for a radio beacon. Now it's time for the science challenge. The teams must visit several sites and examine the geology for evidence of flowing water and life. Nevada, Reno, you have one hour and 15 minutes. But there's a problem, a big one. Ooh, this box is hot. So we got a short and our camera, and it's pulling too much current and frying everything. So we're changing it out. This is toast. Something is burning. Oh, sh uh, guys, is that smoke? Hey, how do you turn off? Turn off. With the clock ticking, engineers rewire the rover. It's got to be the video curve. And then more smoke. Oh, sh change the channel. Yeah, pull out the, pull sign. Do it. the science package has to be removed. That's a big blow. Just unplug it completely. Racing the clock, the camera system is rewired, and this time, 
it works. Team Nevada's rover races into the desert. It discovers a gully of a small stream. That's evidence of flowing water. And plants, clear evidence of life on this simulated exploration of Mars. Now it's BYU's turn. Are they responsive at all? But from the start, there's a problem. The rover is not obeying commands, probably because its computer is overheating in the sweltering desert environment. We don't have very much control over the rover. Uh, there's a huge delay in the signal we send to it. The rover won't stop going in circles, and that powerful close-up camera never sees action. At the end of the day, the judges tally up the points. Nevada Reno, excellent job, our first place winners. When we saw the smoke coming out from the center of the rover, it kind of gave us a scare. And then when we fixed the wires and the smoke continued to come out, we, we thought we were done for. Of course, quick-fingered repairs aren't possible on the real planet Mars. That's something for the teams to think about for next year's rover challenge. <laughs>